In today's episode, I speak with Matt Javitt, who is a world traveler and publisher at World Barbershop Adventures. Here's a guy who was an incredibly successful salesman, and he left his sales career in order to travel the world with his wife and document his haircuts in barbershops around the world. I've never heard of such a thing, but he was able to establish relationships with barbers and tell the stories of destinations around the world through the lens of a barbershop. So I hope you enjoy this conversation with Matt Javitt as much as I did. It's so interesting to see how he and his wife have created a life of international travel and essentially staying with people in their homes around the world in order to have a whole new life. Welcome to the PR Maven podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. I've been strengthening brands through PR for over 35 years, and now I'm celebrating the success of executives, influencers, business owners, and entrepreneurs from all around the world, all of whom have cultivated their brands and broadened their networks through traditional and digital networking methods. Each week, I interview one of these interesting and influential individuals and provide an opportunity for you, the PR Maven Nation, to gain insights from their strategies and stories. So stay tuned for this week's episode, and thanks for listening. Matt Javitt is living a life of many chapters, all building one on the next. He is a five-time international sales award winner and host of the Amazon Prime video show, World Barbershop Adventures, as well as author of Police, Brotherhood in Uniform Around the World, and Ambassador of Culture. With his success at a large multinational company, Matt was awarded trips to exotic locations around the globe to celebrate with his peers. This new exposure opened his eyes to the adventure and opportunity of cultural immersion travel. With a deep desire to understand more about the places and people he had yet to discover, Matt made the difficult decision that few have the confidence to do. He left his high-paying career to travel the world and document his travels through photography, through video, and through storytelling. This was a really interesting episode, and I hope you enjoy my conversation with Matt as much as I did. Matt, you have carved out a really interesting niche in travel and tourism. Tell us how you got into it in the first place. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And the backstory is my wife and I, married 15 years now. We went through a period uh, where I was at this the company I was at, a, a technology services company for nine years. And during that process, of it was a rough start. And then I hit a hot streak and had some, some success with that organization. And I ended up winning nine straight international sales awards because the, the company was based out of Paris, France. And when, we, when I win those awards, they would take uh, 40 of their top sales executives around the globe and we'd go to amazing places um, and we could bring our spouse with us. So we went to places like Istanbul, Turkey, Goa, India, Chiang Mai, Thailand, Cape Town, South Africa. And that introduced us to international travel. And we absolutely fell in love with traveling. And so we began to build in other trips on our own, on our own vacation time. So places like Greece, Croatia, Panama, the country, Argentina, Brazil. And we started to dream of what it would be like if we could just pause our careers and travel full time. And that's what we ended up doing. We, in February of 2017, with one backpack apiece, we set out on a 27 month journey to 35 countries around the world and really took it all in. And during that time of travel and staying in small towns and living with families and um, doing it kind of on the cheap, we, we also balanced some hobbies and some creative ideas popped up. And one of those, the, the thing I think you're alluding to is my barbershop series that is now 
a Amazon Prime video show called World Barbershop Adventures, where it documents me and these barbershops that I would go to around the world. And Nikki would record with, at the time, her iPhone 6. And then we would um, put it together as kind of like a an Anthony Bourdain-ish look at the towns that we were traveling to, but then also highlight the time in the barber chair and the differences in the barbering techniques in these in these shops that we'd go to. I just think that is so fascinating. I'm, I, you know, I've I'm involved with the Society of American Travel Writers and have been involved with travel publicity now since the well, actually, I don't want to date myself too much, but since the 1980s, essentially, I've been doing travel PR, and I know that there's a lot of niche travel. You know, there's cruise travel, there's adventure travel, there's even travel for disabled people. But I have never heard of barbershop travel. So you've created your (laughs) your own niche, and I admire you for that. What is it about barbershops and particularly barbers that you find interesting and compelling? Well, it's really about the most intimate thing you can do on your travels. In my case, when you go to a barbershop, you have another grown man that you've just met putting a blade on your neck when he's when he's cutting my beard and uh, taking care of the, the shave that's about as intimate as you can get and it really hit me as i was doing it even pre-recording because um, we didn't start recording until we were about 14 months into the journey i had an amazing experience in a bucharest romania barber shop and i really hit it off with that guy that sparked the idea but i was in jammu india it's in the jammu Kashmir area that's uh, highly under high conflict, even right now, it's a lot of conflict between the the Indian and Pakistani border there. And um, Nikki and I were up there for a wedding. We were up there for seven days for a wedding. And we were staying near this high traffic, really intense area that was where the buses would come in and drop off, not necessarily travelers, but just drop off people that were coming through that, that area in that town. In every town and city in India is massive. So the, the amount of people are anywhere from eight to 10 million people, even in the smallest cities. And that was this case here in Jammu. And it was just, it was intense. It was a military town. And as I was walking around this little, the little market spaces, as I always do, and we, we really stuck out because it's not really a tourist town, Jammu. So six, six, a uh, white guy with a beard. And uh, a lot of places when I go travel, they think I'm kind of, uh, a mili- I look kind of military-ish, Navy SEAL-ish, if you will. But I was in this small little area, and I found this back, this little back door barber shop that was about eight by eight feet, really tiny. And I just wanted to get my my um, haircut to look good before the wedding. And I went in there, and that's when it really struck me as this guy was like putting his blade on my neck and and cut me. And within feet, these uh, these guys would just walk by and just stare deep into my soul. <laughs> and I, I thought to myself, there is, there's really nothing as risky as it, what I was doing at that time to just be in the hands of another man with a blade and with all these other people wondering who the hell this guy was. And so it's, it's as cool as you can get experience. And then beyond like that, the intimacy barbershops, whether you're in the States or, or you're traveling, there's just a uniqueness, whether you speak the language they're speaking or not, it's kind of like when you walk in that door, there's a bonding that goes on between men around the world. And it's really cool. And then if you do happen to speak the language or they speak English, in, in my case, then you really get some great insights on their community and their culture that goes beyond what you could learn elsewhere. Yeah, you make a very good point about the fact that you do have a bonding experience because these men obviously take a vested interest in making you look good too. I mean, it's it's their, a point of pride for them, I would think, to to be successful in in making you look look and feel better. Absolutely, and they especially when a, a Westerner coming into their shop and they might not know how to cut our hair because hair is different, especially in places like India where their hair is amazing and, and, and gorgeous and it's free flowing. For a Westerner to come in there and and to have like a beard that I have, it's sometimes it's a unique experience for them. So they're trying to make sure they do it the best of their abilities, even though it's new. So so absolutely. And then I'm a walking billboard for them. And and when you do show up with a camera, it even intensifies it more because now they're like, wait a minute, this is going to be on YouTube. 
or uh, or potentially even in the Amazon Prime show, then they really want to take it to the next level. And that's when you get like, sometimes they overthink it, to be truthful. Yeah, I can see how they might feel a little self-conscious being taped. For sure. So I love to travel and I was lucky enough to spend a year in Europe when I was 19 because I did junior year abroad from college. And then that sparked my love of travel. And as I said, I have been a member of the Society of American Travel Writers since 1994 because I've been handling the PR for the State of Maine Office of Tourism. And so I'm going to actually send you some information about the Society of American Travel Writers because you might want to join. But what are some of the favorite destinations that you and Nikki have visited around the world? Being lucky enough to, to go to six of the continents now and, and see a wide range of places. And I, I fell in love with everywhere. Like you name it. I loved it. But the ones that stuck out that we were kind of surprised about how much we loved it. Vietnam, we we really fell in love with, with Vietnam. And we had a chance to go to about six or seven different cities there. Spent about three months total in Vietnam. There's a, there's a small island called Phu Quoc that's off the, the south end between Cambodia and Vietnam. It's an amazing little island and it's it continues to grow. And and we had a blast there. We spent about eight days there. So we really, we really like Vietnam. I love the culture of India. There's nothing like India. I have yet to go to like central parts of Africa. And I would hopefully in my future, I can do that. But, and I, I've heard it compared to what kind of the, the, the organized chaos as it is in India, but there's nothing like India. And I just love it. The, the massive cities, the people, the, the sensory overload. And I just, and we were lucky enough to, to live with a, a bunch of different families when we spent uh, two and a half months total in India. I went to three different um, Indian weddings. And so I, I just, I fell in love with that just because of the, the, how different it is. But when it comes to like natural beauty, New Zealand is off the charts. We loved our time in New Zealand, just how gorgeous it is. Me too. Yeah. Is, isn't it just the best? How, were you on the South Island or the North Island? We spent time on both. We Three, three weeks total. We split it, I think it was eight days on the north and the rest in the south. The, the south really does stick out, especially when you get down to Queenstown and, and those areas. But we, we loved it. Yeah, we were just loved. We At the time, I had my license had expired because we'd been on the road so long. So Nikki was driving and I would tell her apologetically all the time, like, babe, can you just please pull over real quick so I can take some photos? Because it is just... Those long, um, isolated roads that you would just head down and then you would look over and you would see like 2,000 sheep just going in a single direction. So I would just, I would just have her pull over and we'd take photos. But yeah, I just love New Zealand so much. And then, yeah, there was, we, we, we were just, we were just so blessed in this journey because even like places like, um, San Pedro de Atacama in Chile was not a place that was even on our radar. But when we, we was, we ended up spending five weeks total in Chile. We left some room to be spontaneous and everybody kept talking about San Pedro. And so we ended up going up there. It's on, it's on the north end of the, of the country and we loved it. It was one of Nikki's favorite places, mine as well, but the, just the terrain, the it's, it's near the Andes mountains. We had a, a chance to do a great hike. It's one of the, the best places in the world to stargaze. And it was just amazing. So places like that, that, you had no idea that we're out there and then you just stumble upon it. You spend time there and we just dream of going back someday. So it's endless. Like, as you know, the, the list is endless and just can't wait to get back on the road and, and just to continue to explore what's out there. Yeah. Have you paused your travels because of COVID? Absolutely. We had some really cool trips planned and from really end of March, we were supposed to go to uh, Puerto Vallarta, which we've heard so many good things about. Uh, we're supposed to spend about a little over a week down there. And then we had a really cool trip in, in June. We were going to Morocco. So it's been, it's been kind of, kind of heartbreaking. And, but we, and I even, I got invited to an Indian wedding in three weeks from now, which I was going to make every effort to go. But I, once I started doing my research, I found that I can't even, we can't even go. I mean, they're not even giving visas out for things like that. So yeah, it's just, it's really tough for, because we just, uh, just love it so much. And to be like in the situation where you don't even, it, we don't even know when the, when it's going to open up again. You know what I mean? Oh, um, totally. Yeah. How do you get families to host you? Well, during those trips. So in, in the case of India, 
I'm in the technology industry in Indianapolis and I reached out. So while we would travel, if I was going to, a, if we were going to a part of the world where I knew I had contacts or I had like friends of friends, I would reach out and just say, Hey, we're going here in the next month. Does anybody have anybody that we can either stay with or want to host us or just go grab a lunch? And then people would just respond and say, my, my in-laws live in this city or my brother's living here. And then we would meet people along the journey. We met this amazing couple in Greece that they were a German couple. So when we went to Munich, we stayed with them for four days. And then we would like meet couple, like we just, as we were out socializing, we'd meet people and they would get to understand our story. And they would understand that we're like, we're not, we're not scary. And they would say, well, why don't you come? If you have time next weekend, why don't you come over and stay at our place? Or So we, we were very open um, to the idea of um, take it all in. And we were, we were guarded at times, but you'd be surprised how amazing the people are around the world. And especially when you kind of stick out like we did and they hear about our story, they begin to get more and more inviting. And so we would take them up on it. And then we did, we would do things like we'd use Airbnb in a hosted environment. So Nikki and I would use a room in a house where the host was living there and we would stay in the room. It kept costs down, but it also gave you an instant host. And then we also did creative things like work away where we would volunteer our services in exchange for a place to stay. We did that four times um, in Chile, Ecuador. Uh, we stayed on a Greek island for a month where we basically attended a 10-room bed and breakfast where we would change out the rooms, clean the, clean the bathrooms up, greet guests. So we stayed there for a full month. Did the same thing in South Africa in a place called Victoria Bay, South Africa. This is an amazing surf lodge where there were other volunteers as well. So we would um, get to hang out with these other volunteers from around the world. And we would just greet guests at this amazing surf lodge. So we, we did things like that. And we just took advantage of the whole thing, uh, our whole time, not only meeting the people that were locals, but other travelers, and then trying to really get to understand the cultures in those towns and cities. Sounds like you've created a great life for yourselves. And I just hope that we can get through this COVID so you can get back at it. We're going to take a short break right now and then come back to more of our conversation with Matt. But first, I want to tell members of PR Maven Nation about my new book, which is called Grow Your Audience, Grow Your Brand, available now on Amazon.com as a paperback or a Kindle edition. And the book has actionable advice on growing a network and growing a brand by taking care of your audience. And we're going to give away a free Kindle edition of the book if you go to prmaven.com slash giveaway. And Matt, you might just be getting a copy in the mail as a thank you for being on my podcast today. (laughs) So we'll be back with more from Matt in just a moment. Do you want to grow your client or customer base? Perhaps increase brand awareness? Maybe tell your unique story more effectively? Of course you do. But you may be worried that you don't have enough expertise to make that happen. Well, no worries, PR Maven Nation. Let the PR Maven herself, Nancy Marshall, show you how easy it is to get your message across effectively using a powerful yet simple tool, a message map. Nancy's training is often called informative and constructive, well-designed and impactful, with a perfect blend of theory and real-life experience. You will leverage Nancy's expertise to create your own message map when you register for this comprehensive online video training course, which is broken down into four easy-to-understand modules. Normally, this course is priced at $147, but for listeners of the PR Maven podcast... That's you, PR Maven Nation. It's only $29 when you enter the code word PODCAST during enrollment. It even includes a workbook and bonus content to guide you through the process. So go to PRMaven.com and click on the Message Map Mastery course to enroll today. Remember, enter the word PODCAST during enrollment for a special discounted price of $29. Welcome back. And today we're talking with Matt Javitt, world traveler and publisher at World Barbershop Adventures. 
and I want to dive right back in with more questions. And first, actually, Matt, I think I might have mentioned this to you in one of my emails that I have a son, Craig, who prides himself on having a pretty nice flow and a beard and a mustache. And he loves this barber in Portland, Maine, Cliff's Barber Shop. So we'll have to make arrangements for you to come up to Portland, Maine sometime and check out Cliff's where where Craig goes, because I think it's one of those places that's uh, pretty unique and special, because uh, Craig lives in Boston, but he comes back to Portland just to get his hair cut. <laughs> so wow. I know what you're talking about, how, you know, you actually really entrust your barber with <laughs> kind of with your life when you sit down in that barber chair. <laughs> So- <laughs> Absolutely. And when you fall in when you fall in love with a barber in particular, you do you not only the bonds you have over conversation, but you trust them with your look as well. So I totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> Craig Marshall, if you're listening, I'm talking about you. <laughs> Craig was a guest on episode number three of the podcast, actually, for any members of PR Maven Nation. You can you can go back to episode three or you can check Craig's uh, hairstyle out on on the website under episode number three. So Matt, this podcast is all about building your brand and building your audience through online and traditional networking. And what are some of the most renowned barbershops you've worked with? And how did they become well known? Yeah, there's a, as we traveled, there was a bunch that that really stuck out. The one at Wolfman's in Tokyo did a great job. The Bali Barber Shop in, in Bali, Indonesia is amazing. That's He's actually a New Yorker that married an Indonesian woman who had a salon on the first floor. And then his time there, he's, he's been in, in Bali for 10 years. Through his time there, he saw a need for men and built his uh, amazing barber shop on the second floor uh, that actually uses some of her services as well with, when you're doing like nails and waxing and stuff like that. Very high end, every, anywhere in Bali understands how to take care of people. They do a great job. But the, the, the one that really sticks out to me is it's called G's Barbershop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I love G's because they really own the whole Milwaukee brand and theme. They not only do they have an old like Milwaukee Bucks basketball court in their barbershop and their barbershop, by the way, he's grown over the years. A G's grown over the years where he recently purchased out an old bank and he converted the bank into a massive barbershop where they have over 20 barbers and they get a ton of, of foot traffic in there. And they're known in the community as being one of the best barber or being the, the go-to barbershop, not only for regular people, but the athletes, a lot of the Milwaukee athletes, the Milwaukee Bucks go there and the, some of the baseball players from the Brewers will, will go over there, go over there as well. But He's done a wonderful job of just owning the whole Milwaukee thing, but he also does a lot with the community. He he does some speaking events. He'll bring like strong African American men in to talk about the topics of the day and, and the things that they're going through. He does that about once a month. But his his local branding and the fact that it's all community based, but he gives amazing haircuts is is really cool. So he sticks out to me when it comes to how do you differentiate yourself in a kind of a, a not flooded market, but there's a lot of barbershops out there and he's done a great job from going from his own single chair into really the best in the region. And then when, when it comes to like when celebrities come in town, they make sure af- athlete celebrities, they come in town, he's cut Shaq's hair. He's cut all the different Charles Barkley, I think went in there and they, they'll do different things when athletes travel in to broadcast games as well. You know, I'm so glad you used that word differentiates himself because that really is the essence of building a strong personal brand is you want to be differentiated from everybody else who does the same thing you do. So whether you're a barber or a hairdresser or you're an electrician or a plumber or a lawyer or a doctor, essentially, there's a lot of people who probably do the same thing you do, but you want to be the one that everybody's talking about. So it's so important to have a story and a point of def- differentiation. And there's a book by Donald Miller called Building a Story Brand, which is essentially about having a story about yourself that 
you tell to your own customers and clients with the idea that they're going to then repeat that story to others. And, you know, even with media coverage that, you know, they'll tell their story through television or radio or newspapers or magazines or podcasts like this one. So having a point of differentiation and being memorable. And the other thing that's really important is being findable so that if somebody hears a tidbit of your story, for example, best barber in Milwaukee, you know, that if somebody Googles, you know, best barbershop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that you're the one that comes up first. And having a strong story that's told widely in the media helps with that search engine optimization. So it really ties all together. So Matt, if you were to give a barber three tips on how to increase their business, what would it be? The first one is, I mean, it goes back to relationships in general, but it's just communication. And the communication is like when you walk in, the, the greeting you give somebody as they walk into your shop is really important being recognized because I've, I went, I've been to shops in different places and you walk in, nobody says, hi, you don't understand. Do they take walk-ins or is it um, appointment only? So you might just be sitting in the chair. There's no one there to greet you because all the barber shops, all the barbers are busy cutting hair. And just that lack of a greeting can be a real turnoff because um, sometimes it can be in- intimidating. Even somebody's experience as I am going to a ton of different barber shops, you don't want to you don't want to kind of mess with that vibe. And sometimes you don't understand what's happening in, in barber shops. So I think that initial greeting, making people feel welcome as they walk into the door, is really important. And then just throughout the process of cutting hair, telling I think it's really important to tell the customer, what you're doing. Like if, if you're cutting certain areas, your hair, you're changing clippers or you're doing different things, describe what you're doing. So they, they're not just sitting there thinking, wow, those, that's a big chunk of hair coming off. Or I'm not sure um, why he's doing this, especially like in that first one or two visits with the new barber. I think that's really important for the barbers to do. And then the, obviously when you're, when we're done, finished up saying goodbye, thanking them for their tip or, and, and then even going as far as following up, whether you you captured their information from a tech standpoint or you you put you tell them to go on your Instagram or your Facebook page. So then you can follow up to make sure that they're satisfied and then to get them back in the chair later. So I think that the communication throughout is extremely important. And then as far as another tip would be like posting great photos. So we live in a day and time where people aren't. They'll, they'll let you take a photo of them if you're like really proud of their haircut. And if you can take their photo and then you can post on Instagram, post on Facebook, your, your different social media, then that, or Google maps is real important. I found a lot of barber shops using Google maps. So if you're using your best photos in the types of hair that you're doing as, as for a barber shop, then as people look to get their haircut a, a certain way, they'll know that you're good with that you're at good at doing that. So I think that's a good, uh, good idea. And then I think I don't see this done a lot, but you know how barbershops are always busy on the weekend because that's when people have off or they they're busy on like a Thursday night or a Friday day because guys are trying to get ready for their weekend to look good. I would, if I was a barbershop, I would, I would promote those dead times. Like the times you go to a barbershop and everybody's just sitting around. If I was, if I utilize social media, You can use Instagram stories. You can use your Facebook page, or if you have the texts of your, of your clients, you could say, look, we've got a huge gap Tuesday from noon till three haircuts are 10% off your, it's going to be easy to get in and get out. And we want to get people in the chair. So I would use things like that to, to promote the sales to, then you're, then you don't, you're not as busy on the weekends. You're, you're filling up all that time during the week. And then it's a good pro- it's a good experience for everybody because barbershops are cool, but nobody wants to sit in a barber sh- barbershop for four hours on a Saturday if they don't if they don't have to if they can just get in and get out in an hour or so. So if you're respecting their time, they're saving a little bit of money. Then it's kind of a win win for everybody because a lot of customers they'll go to a shop, see that there's three or four people deep, and they'll just move on to the next barbershop because they don't have that level of loyalty that you're trying to build. But if you're always getting them in there and you're always taking care of them, then they will be more loyal to you. 
Right, exactly. You want people to know, like, and trust you, to be loyal to you, and also if you have a strong brand, people are more likely to wait, you know, or to to sit and wait, or actually. When they call and make an appointment, if they have to wait a few more days, they're going to be more likely to do that because they want to be treated. They want to get that treatment from that best barber in town, as opposed to just another Absolutely. barber. Yeah. So, is there a book, an app, or a website that has influenced your career? Because you had a very, very successful sales career before you started this new career of documenting your barbershop adventures. So what has influenced you the most, Matt? The book that was probably had the most profound effect on me was called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. And that's a book from 1903 or 1902. But and it's a short read. It's it's probably fifty ish pages, but it's a, a foundational book that a lot of the life coaches of today, Tony Robbins, the late Jim Rohn, guys like that that I, I I love and follow and and have built their concepts into my life. They they built upon James Allen's book, but it's it's it was very it really helped me understand different aspects of life. So I was blessed where I played division one basketball. I was actually an academic all American in, in college, got an MBA in business while I coached a couple years. And then I jumped into kind of the, the world of trying to make money, but it wasn't until my early thirties that I had access to this book and, and read it, which led me to reading other books that just really opened my eyes to a different way of looking at life. And the fact that the, the thoughts that we put on our head can really dictate what's possible in our short lives that we live. And that, that book was, was one of the game changers for me. I've read it all the time. I read it all the time. I'm actually um, re-reviewing it right now. I took it. It was the only physical book. My wife and I only took one backpack a piece and it was the only physical book that I packed. I took a Kindle and I took that physical book because it's just, it's just so powerful. So I, I recommend it all the time, uh, again, as a man thinketh. And it's it just helps you understand that if you're thinking negative thoughts, negative things are going to come into your life. If you're thinking positive thoughts and you're dreaming big and you put action behind it, anything is possible. And my story is one that if if you look at what we achieved and being able to, to live out a, a dream to, to do what we did, it's I tell you, it's all because of thoughts and and the actions we put behind those thoughts and, and, and putting uh, huge dreams and, and goals out into the universe and just working really hard to make them come true. And you'll be surprised what the universe aligns for you if, if you just if you put it out there. Oh, I agree so much. And I also agree that you need to surround yourself with people who think positive thoughts also, because if you're surrounding yourself with negative people, it can be kind of like an energy suck. It can just drain you of all of your positive energy. I'm, I'm somebody who really tries to think positively all the time myself and, and have found that having, having a lot of energy comes from having a positive mind. So. I agree absolutely. I'll have to I'll have to read that book and hopefully it could be as a woman thinketh too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> so if people want to get in touch with you or watch your series of what's the best way they can follow up? I have all my connection points at mattjavitt.com and that's that's my personal website. We do. We have the travel blog. Our personal travel blog is at passportjoy.com. And you'll see a lot of the links there to the World Barbershop Adventures, our travel podcast. I did, I did a, a photography book that I'm really proud of that I didn't realize at the time would be a, a bit controversial. But I took, I took photos of police officers during our journey. And it's, it just happened. It was happenstance. I'd take these long walks and I would encounter men and women in uniform. And I would just ask if I can take their photo with no intention behind it. And then I ended up getting over 80, 80 of these photos. So when I came home, I had some encouragement from different law enforcement officers that said, you should, you should really do something with this. So I, I made this awesome book that ended up getting me featured on Fox and friends. And I've gotten a lot of great reviews from around the country and in different parts of the world that, that have gotten the book and they love it. So 
so that's that's on there as well. The links to that as well. So all of our different, I guess, creative outlets are on the passportjoy.com website or mattjava.com for other like speaking stuff as well. Well, that's awesome. It really sounds like you've created a life that you love. And uh, I just hope for all of our sake that this uh, COVID pandemic will subside <laughs> so that we all can travel again. I know that I've got, I normally would be traveling a lot at this time of year and have had to kind of change my lifestyle as a result of staying in place. Yeah. But we can always hope for the future. <laughs> so, Matt, thank you for joining me today. This has been really fascinating, and I'm definitely going to check out your series online. I'm looking forward to watching that and and check out the book that you re- recommended, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. And I hope you have a great day, and I hope everybody in PR Maven Nation has a great day as well. That's it for this week's episode. I'd like to thank you for listening. And if you feel that you've gotten value out of today's conversation, consider leaving a five-star review on iTunes or whatever app you're using to tune in. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should do so. I release a new episode each week and subscribing will make sure you get an alert when there's a new episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation by going to prmaven.com slash nation and clicking join. It's free and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you have an Alexa-enabled device, be sure to add the PR Maven Marketing Minute to your daily flash briefing menu. Thanks again for listening and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation.